easy to set up and stunning field of view. Today I'm going to give you a talk of my handheld binoculars, my thoughts on their performance and some simple upgrades I've made to enhance their performance. So before we go through the binoculars themselves, let me give you some thoughts, some of my thoughts on using binoculars for astronomy. Now I spent the last few weeks studying Jupiter, setting up the C11, so I've got a mount, I've got a counterweight, I've got a telescope, I've got to live it cool, I've got to set up power for the tracking, I've got to capture all these videos and then process them afterwards. And so with binoculars you've got none of that, you can literally carry them out in one hand and you're out observing. So much easier to set up, so much easier to pack away. And I started observing with binoculars back in the day, and that was all I could afford. And I had an absolute blast sketching deep sky objects, exploring the moon, watching the moons go around Jupiter. Uh, great fun, and I still enjoy using binoculars to this day, and I, these are still part of my regular setup. And if you are interested, I've made a video about my 100mm APM binoculars as well. So let's go on to these binoculars. These are the Canon 15 by 50 image stabilized binoculars. And I even have a page of notes so I don't forget anything as well. So these binoculars are image stabilized, which is something Canon and other camera lens makers develop that alleviates this sort of handheld shake when you're looking through the binoculars, inevitably your hands are moving, your heart's moving. And that means with the image stabilization, you don't necessarily need a tripod that takes away all that high speed jitter and you just have that nice smooth field of view and the reason why i chose image stabilized binoculars is that i didn't necessarily want to bring a tripod if i'm on holiday with a family where space in the car is limited if i'm away on a work trip i can put these literally in a laptop with my star charts with my sketching kit and it fits in in a small laptop bag at the very most the other point is if I'm away at our dark sky site and I've got the telescope and the mount and I've got the battery, all I need is these. I don't need to bring another tripod, I don't need to bring another setup. And for just sitting back on a deck chair looking up at the stars with that image stabilisation on, they're absolutely stunning. So let's go on to the price. So when I was researching this video, I was amazed at the price. They've gone a little crazy and whether that's due to Brexit or the pandemic, I'm not sure, but they're about 50% more now than what I paid for just over, I don't know, was it five, eight years ago. So my cost per use is actually getting quite reasonable. So yes, they are expensive, but you do get excellent optics and you've got the image stabilization. So I do think you get what you pay for. Um, when I think back to the number of nights where these have been covered in dew uh, and the number of times where they've been, you know, in the back of the car or in a suitcase on a, on a, on a work trip or in my hand luggage, the, the electronics and the optics still work absolutely fine. So they are really robust. So onto the optics, the optical quality of these binoculars is simply stunning. The stars are sharp across the field of view. You don't get that elongation and blurring in the outer part of the field of view. Really great views of the double cluster, the scanning the Milky Way or the moons of Jupiter next to the brilliant planet. And it seems to cope really well with that bright, you know, the, the, the limb of the moon where you sometimes get some false colour. They're really well, really well designed. I can't fault the optics. Right, so 15, 15 times magnification is a little bit higher than you'd normally have in a pair of handheld binoculars. But that's the beauty of image stabilisation. They are so easy to handhold. And the reason why I went for a higher magnification is it does bring out those little more details. So things like the double cluster are well resolved, globular clusters are grainy rather than smooth. The downside is of course, conversely, you lose a little bit of field of view, but it's still, you know, four and a half degrees across, which is plenty sufficient for things like the Veil Nebula or watching the outer glows of the Andromeda Galaxy. So the other thing I like is the ergonomics. They've got this rubber coating, this rubber grip that makes them easy to hold, even if you've got gloves on or if they're getting damp from the dew and everything's within easy reach so you've got this image stabilization button and you've got the focus so they're all easy to hold when you when you've got them on the binoc when the binoculars are up at your eyes and this rubber coating is also weatherproof now i don't really go out observing 
you know, in, in the rain. But that means if it, it is dewy or if there is a bit of frost in the air, they're not, you know, the, the optics aren't going to get damaged. And, but the downside to all this is is the weight. These are heavy. This is over a kilo, 1.2 kilos. So you could use them as a little weight training. So I would suggest hiking cross country with these, but I've taken them on trips to you know, nature reserves or local walks and they're absolutely fine for that. But but they are heavier than a traditional pair of binoculars and I guess that's just because of the electronics inside and the prisms for the image stabilisation. Right, the downsides and compared to excellent optics and compared to image stabilisation these are quite small points. And this is also where I've started putting some of the accessories in as well. So the eye guards at this end, at the eyepiece end, are absolutely awful. I can't believe they spent so much money on excellent optics and image stabilisation and they couldn't be bothered to put some decent rubber around the eye guards. So this sort of hard, almost like car tyres, uh, feels like at this end. I got so fed up with them that I actually cut them away with a pair of nail scissors, just gently cut them away. And I replaced it with a Bino Bandit, which is this neoprene guard that goes over the eyepieces. And they're really good actually, so if I hold them up to my eyes, and I now can't see you, but this rubber eye guard cuts out all the stray light from around your eyes, so it's very comfortable to observe through. And it's such a step change over the original eye guard. One of those things that must have cost them pennies to change on an expensive pair of binoculars. And so if you're observing with street lights nearby, with a bright new moon nearby, it cuts out all that peripheral glare and makes the view that much more pleasant. At the optical end, at this end, at the objective end, they don't come with any dust covers, which is absolutely crazy. I know they've got hardened glass in there, so technically they don't need any, but for a few pounds, I have bought some camera lens with the, he says, hunting for them, plastic spring clips. And these just fit over the objective lens. So I can't believe, again, these things must cost pennies. You know, they come from the factory that made the binoculars. So why they can't include them, I don't know. And the objectives are literally... The objectives are literally right on the edge of the barrel. So I bought some aluminium, aluminium, uh, what do you call them, glare shields or something like that, and they literally just thread in. And that's the other beauty, of course, being a Canon product is that they've all got threaded barrels, so you can put these accessories straight on. So that just helps cut down the glare if you've got a, a light on the side or the moon's up in the sky, cuts out. And then the dust covers go inside, dust caps go inside. Like so. Right, the final point I want to make is that the image stabilisation is great for handheld observing. So I'm sitting on the sun lounger, watching the stars on a summer night is absolutely wonderful. But if I want to refer to my star charts or make some notes, you've obviously got to put binoculars down, get your notes, and then you've got to find whatever it is you've just been looking at. So you lose the field of view and then you've got to hunt it, hunt for it again. And of course with time, you know, this is a kilo, so even if you've got your elbows tucked in so you're observing nicely, your arms do get tired just because you're holding a heavy pair of binoculars up to your eyes. So I actually prefer to use a tripod just to hold them still. So the downside of using a tripod for astronomy is that you can't observe anything over about 45 degrees in comfort because the eyepieces get too close to the tripod, which means you can't physically get your head in to observe. And of course, that's the best part of the sky, stuff above 45 degrees, you're above all the murk of the atmosphere. So in my next video, I'm going to show you how I made a parallelogram mount to observe objects high in the sky in complete comfort.